A phrase that I have been using quite frequently over the past year is, the struggle is real. This phrase can be applied quite liberally to many situations and quite conservatively to our current one. But for us Christians, the struggle that we are in, the daily struggle that we are in, is to respond to our Lord's call to holiness. Pope Francis, in his apostolic exhortation, Gaudete et Exaltate, on the call to holiness in today's world, writes, The Lord asks everything of us, and in return he offers us true life. The happiness for which we were created, he wants us to be saints and not to settle for a bland and mediocre existence. For our generation, as was in generations past, to respond to our Lord's call to holiness daily poses its own risks, challenges, and opportunities. What Pope Francis emphasizes in his exhortation, which almost becomes a summary of key themes in his pontificate, is that God made us for a reason. To know his love and the fullness of life that he offers to us to experience his fulfilling plans in our life. By sharing that love and life we have received, we encounter the risen God, the risen Lord, alive in our presence, and then we share that with others in a personal encounter with the people that we meet. Holiness then breeds out to witnessing. Our primary and fundamental vocation or calling is to be holy. While the struggle is real to answer that call, God has given us all the tools to help us along, to intentionally respond to that call by immersing ourselves in the sacraments and in relational prayer. At our baptism where we are given new life in Christ, our new identity being made children of the Heavenly Father, united to Christ, priest, prophet, and king, temples of the Holy Spirit, we are immersed into the dynamic love and life that exists, that subsists in the Most Holy Trinity. The Catechism of the Catholic Church writes, this filial adoption transforms us by giving us the ability to follow the example of Christ. It makes us capable of acting rightly and doing good. In union with the Savior, the disciple attains the perfection of charity, which is holiness. It is in this time post-baptism that we are in a time of glorification, a time where we are transformed more into the image of Christ for the world. When we are confirmed, we are united to Christ more deeply in the mission of the church, strengthened by the Holy Spirit to be witnesses, to proclaim the good news as the apostles did. They experience, they encounter the risen Lord in the flesh to die no more. And then at the Pentecost, the Holy Spirit comes into their life to be bold in proclaiming to the world that only in Jesus Christ is there forgiveness of sins and salvation for us. This task, this mission, is not an easy one. The struggle is real in carrying that out. But the good Lord gave us the Eucharist, the abiding presence of his risen, of the risen Lord with us. Christ comes to be our food, to nourish us, to strengthen us, to transform us into him 
to become like the one we eat. Relational prayer is the other tool that God has given to us to help us along in our struggle to be holy. The disciples, when they were struggling in prayer, asked the Lord to teach them how to pray, and we were given the prayer par excellence, the Lord's Prayer or the Our Father. Within that prayer, we were, are given many petitions that can be taken individually to help us attain the holiness. The two that have a great deal of practical use each day is thy will be done and the petition to forgive. Holiness is doing the will of God. Not my will, but his will to obey his commandments. To say in the struggle, not my will, but yours be done, as our Lord showed us in the Garden of Gethsemane, sets for us the example for us to imitate. Holiness is being able to forgive and not to hold on to grudges which weigh on our hearts, making them very heavy. To forgive those who have wronged us. To forgive our enemies, which is a struggle in and of itself. To be able to say, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Again, our Lord showing us the example from the cross and for us to imitate that example. And when we have sinned, when we haven't done the will of God, when we haven't been able or readily to forgive, we go to the sacrament of reconciliation, immersing ourselves into that divine mercy that raises us to life in Christ. The Easter season gives us 50 days to get back to taking this fundamental vocation to be holy a bit more seriously to respond more generously to that call, especially in our current struggle of the present situation. As we read from Pope Francis, we are not to settle for a bland and mediocre existence. We are to struggle with all its risks and challenges to be holy. This takes root in our day-to-day -day living. Not in an ideal world, not in a virtual world, but in the real world. To encounter the risen Lord daily, as the apostles did in the upper room. To call upon the Holy Spirit to be stirred up in our hearts daily, as the apostles did in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. To respond to the call to be witnesses to the things that we have seen and heard the encounters that we've had with the Lord, what he has done for us, what he has done for me, we go out and we bring that to others daily. The thing is here, God is calling you to be holy. Not the ideal you, not the better you, not the you the world wants, but you, the mother the wife, the father, the husband, the student, the child, the professional. Pope Francis exhorts, are you married? Be holy by loving and caring for your husband or wife as Christ does for the church. Are you a parent? Be holy by patiently teaching the little ones how to follow Jesus. And don't forget to pray for your children. If you are too busy to pray for your children intentionally, then re-examine your priorities. Whether they've gone off and you want them to return to the church, whether, they are still, whether they're still in the church, and thanks be to God for that, pray that the evil one doesn't contaminate their heart to be delivered from that evil spirit. In this, we show our children, we show our young people, what it means to live out the daily struggle to be holy. Yes, the struggle is real. 
but do not be discouraged. We are but poor sinners before the Lord. We are just humble beggars. The Lord suffered, died, and rose again, and dies no more. He gives us everything we need. The sacraments, prayer, the grace of the present moment, not the ideal moment, but the present real moment, to be holy. We shouldn't settle for anything less. 